Number 8 then from the 2006 Higher Math Paper 1, complete the square. So for part A here, there are three marks. Write it in this form. Sometimes it's a bit irritating when they say write it in a certain form with A's and B's and C's as to whether do I then have to state A equals B equals C equals. In some questions, you do have to do that. So, completing the square would be this. Now, the annoying thing is this 2. If it was just an x squared, it'd be a fairly straightforward one to complete a square. If it was something like, if the square itself was something like x plus 2 squared, then that would quite simply be square the first, square the last, which are quite clean separations. And then for the middle term, you've got a mixture. It's twice the product. But if it's just an x squared, this won't interfere with the product. It'll simply be 2 times this number here. 2 times 2x will be our 4x. There are five parts in this. You only need two of them to find the other three. And that's the way you do this. If you can just get it to say x squared, and that's what the first mark's for, knowing how to deal with that 2. And the way you deal with that 2 is, you take it out. Take it out of the 2x squared term, so I've got an x squared. Divide by 2 to take it out of this one, so that makes that a 2x. But don't put that down to minus 3 upon 2, because you can see quite clearly, I want that constant to come at the end. So just leave it out of it. This is the gap that needs to be filled to complete the square. So the next line would be then, sorry, that would be the first mark there knowing how to deal with that 2, which is quite simply, take it out. So this, there's two parts of these five. I've got these two parts. From these two parts, how do you get these three parts? Well, if that's x squared, that's just an x. Of course, that would be squared there. I can't do the last one yet, but I can do the middle one now. If that's a 4x, that's just a 2. If that's a 2x, that's just a 1 because that number is twice the product, and with that being a 1, it just means it's 2 times this thing. Now I can finish off. That must be, if that's a 4, then 1 squared would just be a 1. That's the second mark, getting this 1 here. And then the third mark is for finishing it off. Well, putting that 1 in made this expression bigger than it was. Not just one bigger, because I had two bundles of this, it made it two times one, two bigger. So to keep this the same size, as soon as I put plus one in there, I should really put minus two to balance it out. Now I've got my constant, minus five, and there's my third mark. The only thing is, do I now play safe and say, ah, so A is, B is, and C is? I think I will. Probably unnecessary, but I tend to just play safe in these. That means that the A, was a 2, the b was a 1, and the c was a negative 5. Certainly in the marking scheme it says 1 mark for a equals 2, 1 mark for b equals 1, and 1 mark for c equals negative 5. Now that's the standard completing the square, making the square work by finding what this number should be. There's an alternative way you can do it, which is to make this the same as that. These are both quadratics. You can find a, b, and c if I make that into the same form of a quadratic as this with the three separate terms. It's called equating coefficients. So if I say that 2x squared plus 4x minus 3 is meant to be the same as a times x plus b squared plus c, then first of all, make them look the same. So what's that? That's a times, square that bracket, square the first, Square the last, in the middle, twice the product, the product of positive bx, double it, 2bx plus a c, and then finally multiply it out and tidy it up. So a times x squared, 2abx plus ab squared plus c. Now they're in the same form. I've got these three parts. I've got an x squared term, there's its coefficient. I've got an x term, there's its coefficient. I should have included that plus. And I've got a constant at the end. Constant at the end, there's its coefficient. Well, there it is. It's called the absolute coefficient. So now we can say, if these two things are meant to be the same, remember, this isn't just an equation which is true just for one value of x or so. This is true for every value of x. They're meant to be identical. It's an identity. 
Well, if these are meant to be the same, then that a straight away must be a 2. Looking at the x squared terms, a is equal to 2. So there's your first mark. Looking at the x terms, well, 2ab must equal 4. 2ab equals 4. Well, I know what a is. a is 2. So 2 times 2 times b is 4. 4b four is 4. That means that b equals 1. There's the next mark. Now looking at the constant term. A, B squared plus C, constant term, the term without an X, should be equal to negative 3. I know what A is, I know what B is, so I can figure out C. A is a 2, B is a 1, so 2 times 1 is 2. Take the 2 across and subtract, and you've got, oh, I'll put it over here, C equals negative 3, take away the 2, C equals negative 5, and there's your third mark. Now, you can use that technique all the time to complete a square just by expanding this the required form into a quadratic and comparing coefficients just generally it's longer to do it this way than it is to go through this but sometimes it might be easier doing this if these have got nasty numbers in them negatives and fractions and so on there's always an alternative that you could do but you probably did this B then Write down the coordinates of the turning point and the parabola with this equation. Well, there's a couple of things you could do. You could differentiate it, but it's only one mark. That mark will just be for doing what it said. Write down. It doesn't say explain. It just says write it down. That's it done. You could differentiate it. You could say, ah, well, dy by dx will be 4x plus 4. And at the turning point... That means that 4x plus 4 will equal 0, which means 4x equals negative 4, which means x equals negative 1. And then put negative 1 back into that to have the y coordinate would be negative 1 squared plus 4 times negative 1 minus 3. So that would be 2 minus 4 minus 3 minus 7 minus 5. So y would be negative 5. So there's your turning point. Negative 1, negative 5. But that's an awful lot of work just for this one mark. Do it if you want. You wouldn't get any extra credit for doing this. It's just one mark. But it is a part B, so it must be related to part A. And in part A, you had that in the completed squared form, which was 2 times x plus 1 squared minus 5. Of course, you don't need to write this down in part B. I'm just putting this down to remind you. And you probably remember from when you were doing the parabolas that the turning point comes from these two numbers. And you probably remembered it as, oh, it's the opposite of that and the same as that. So straight away you'd say, my turning point is opposite of negative of 1, negative 1, same as this, negative 5. And there it is, in one go, turning point. I might have preferred it if the question had said, give a reason. That could have been a reason. But the reason from this expression is, since a square can never be negative, if it wanted a reason, it would be taking this part here. 2 times x plus 1 squared has always got to be greater than or equal to 0. The 2 is important here, because if that was a negative 2, then it would always be negative, obviously, because this part's always positive. That's always greater than or equal to 0, which means that the minimum value will be the lowest that can get to is 0, so it will be 0 minus 5, which is negative 5. The minimum value is negative 5 when that bracket is equal to 0. And that's when x equals negative 1. That would be the algebraic reason for that. The lowest value this can have is negative 5 because the lowest value of a square is 0. And it will have that lowest value when that bracket equals 0. So he didn't need any of that. It was just, there we go, there we go, one mark, done.